Yeah, first of all, hel hello, uh, and thank you very much for uh, taking the time. Uh, I'm Hannes, this is uh, Stefan from Coffee Circle. Uh, yeah, nice to see you, Wusso and Ta. Uh, we've been in touch via email a lot, and sometimes also WhatsApp and, and, and messages like that. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time today to uh, uh, yeah give us a little bit uh, information and updates from from your side, how things are in Myanmar, how how the last harvest went. So I am very curious to learn more a little bit about the coffee in the background today. Whereas Stefan is very curious to learn more about the history, I think, right as well. So maybe you want to start, Stefan, do you have something specific? Yeah, of course, Hannes has the advantage that he knows you already, at least he knows Boo. Uh, I, we haven't had the pleasure yet, except from some brief email contact. Uh, Boo, what is your role at the Jade Aka Coffee Group? Uh, hello. So uh, I have two positions, actually. <laughs> In the Jade Aka Coffee Group, I'm taken as the project manager. Um, uh, and uh, marketing, I also take and see in marketing. But for the company side, uh, I take in the managing trade of the role. Yeah. So for Guda, uh, Guda is taking uh, taking role as the general manager uh, for both uh, both uh, in the group and also the uh, company side as well. So today he will share more about the permits and. Uh, Operation parts. Yeah. And uh, Kota, how long have you worked for the Jade Coffee Group? It's been quite for uh, three years now. Mm -hmm. I think it must have been around the time when the um, the GIZ started, you know, trying to promote your work as well. Uh, when yeah. did? How old is the Jade Aka Coffee Group? Tell me a bit about your history, how that came about. Uh, actually, the Zede Aka Coffee Group started on the 1994 uh, with, you know, the local farmer uh, across the Aka ethnic group uh, around, uh, actually more than 21, but uh, the coffee farmer only have, uh, because not, we are not farming not only the coffee, but also other uh, fruit like the uh, apricot and uh, dancing and tea as well. But uh, for coffee, we only, you know, like, uh, only 31 farmers are, uh, you know, planting the coffee uh, since 2012. Uh, but when we started in 1994, we start with the apricot and tea. So the group has been, you know, like more than 20 years. But uh, like the coffee group, we start uh, on the two, uh, 2012. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the Aka, of course, maybe we should talk about the Aka first, because that's of particular interest to me. I wasn't and still am not very familiar with your traditions and your culture. Uh, how did the, first of all, what do you think is specific about the Aka culture? What makes you as a group, if that's how you would describe yourself? Uh, in Myanmar, the Aka people only live in the Asian states, like the Chandong and the Chile, mostly. Uh, other area you rarely to find the Aka. <laughs> and also the population around the one less, around one less across the Myanmar. And very few people are educated because most uh, Aka people live in, on the mountain. Uh, I don't know why they're afraid to migrate to the city, <laughs> but they love to stay in the mountain, maybe because of the weather and uh, the, you know, like, uh, bus not business, uh, they more doing the agriculture uh, for their living. But luckily, my dad and my mom, they migrate to the city and they also working for the agri, agri and this, they are also like, you know, visionary for the Jade Aka group. So uh, since then, I also like participate, you know, I joined in the group since I was young, yeah, because of my dad and mom, uh, yeah. Uh, so the culture and tradition, does, um, the dress and the culture is quite similar the Chinese, uh, according to the history, uh, Aka people migrate from the Mongolia and, you know, like from the China, East China. But this is uh, the history, but uh, 
before uh, during the Second World War II, they migrated like uh, you know like Myanmar, East Myanmar, uh, Thailand, and also the Laos and Vietnam and China. Uh, so according to history, we can find like uh, you know like that fight uh, you know nation they migrate. So uh, now uh, uh, about the uh, the uh, Myanmar Akha people. So based on the you know like uh, the country that they migrate, we also meet with the other culture like uh, in Shan State. The Shan is the majority ethnic group. So some of our culture is you know like mixed with the Shan and the Burmese now. Yeah. So we had our own lecture. Uh, we had our own you know like. Mm, uh, culture as well. So every year we celebrate our New Year's festival and you know other harvesting festival and Thanksgiving festival uh, in Yama. Yeah. I was actually also curious about uh, the variety that uh, the farmers grow and plant and you also mentioned that you um, share some new plants or seedlings with other farmers. Is there, because you told me it's a mixed variety, so it's a couple of different ones, is there anything that is now specifically, I mean, popular or that you're distributing more that you found was, is working very well in the area? Yeah, Kodaka, you please answer this question. Yeah, actually, the, the, yeah. uh, the, uh, the specific is, specific is just like a Katie Moore, it's mixed again, because of, we are trying to, I mean, uh, get a different uh, katoi, but the problem is we can't get that uh, from our Myanmar Coffee Association. So we have to use again the mixed coffee again to, I mean, give the farmers mm -hmm. uh, last year and this year as well, because we can't get any specific uh, the coffee uh, from our uh, association as well, because they have uh, quite a lot of challenge as well this year. Our cropping, they can't organize to make it because of this kind of political situations and everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to take uh, another one or two more years, or I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Do people approach you and say, I want to work at your farm? And how do you divide the work? If you can talk about a bit the, the setup in terms of the labor. Uh, we have, you know, like uh, for the worker teams, actually, we don't have many. I mean, the farmer doesn't have many to pay each, uh, you know, like. A worker that much. So what we do is that uh, all of the members we share the physical labor work. Like for example, today we go and harvesting your your coffee farm, and tomorrow I will go your uh, coffee farm again. So you don't need to pay you know money for your physical labor. So we share like this, and other for the production or uh, the operation part, uh, like our team member come and volunteer. Sometimes we have to hire a few more daily workers to do the job. So we try to, you know, like share the physical level each other within group. Like uh, now the a new member would like to join. We try to uh, check their commitment and dedications. Uh, so uh, to become our member. So they had to stay like, or uh, to stay outside and observe our, you know, activity and, you know, like, joining our activity and you know look at our cooperation so based on that we trying to select uh, the farmer who can be uh, you know our member like kind of because we don't do not only for the income you know to increase the income but also like you know we had to do uh, we had to share a lot of things to develop the, our community together so you know uh, if some people like would like to get only uh, profit and benefits, uh, they can, They are very difficult to be our member. So we make sure that we try to, you know, like give enough time them uh, for them to observe our uh, group activity and also make sure to know about our vision to join our group. Yeah. Are you in touch at all with other um, coffee farms, other producers in other states uh, at all to exchange knowledge or to talk about, you know, helping each other at all? Yes, we do. We do have. Uh, we are also like one of the co uh, coffee association member. So whenever they have the event and talk show or knowledge sharing program, they're trying to reach out and invite us to join. 
So most of our farmer are, are you know, like uh, cannot speak Burmese. I think only like five or ten people, five people can speak to Burmese very well, but ten people are understanding better. So we select like alternated to join the top show and event as well. Uh, and also like we have a lot of challenges for our profit, uh, side. The internet connection is not good enough. So like whenever you have meeting me and Kuta used to join mostly <laughs> and the other member because uh, you know like people can speak uh, this very well and also we're trying to find a good internet uh, place uh, uh, to join the event yeah so even we have a lot of uh, limitations about language barrier and the uh, internet and electricity things we're trying to connect with the uh, existing and other you know associations as well have you received any orders or just, you know, have you received any uh, messages from other uh, importers like us in other parts of the world? Have you noticed that the demand for coffee from you specifically, from Myanmar in general, has increased in the last few years? Yes, uh, we do have, uh, like, Thailand and China, they try to contact us uh, last, since last year, but uh, uh, we love to work with you. <laughs> so, yeah, and also we don't have enough quantity to, to give them. So, you know, we still, you know, like, uh, yeah, just say sorry to them. Uh, but they still keep uh, in touch with us to share and to give some order to them. But still, uh, we don't have enough quantity to share them. So, still, we are working only with you. Thank you. Well, we, we love to carry your yeah. coffee, obviously, and we want to take it all. At the same time, the dilemma is we want to make your coffee better known globally as well. So that's that's the issue. We shared already that the customers are very happy with the coffee. So we roast it to a filter coffee degree. So most of our customers, I think, will brew the coffee and, and filter coffee preparation methods. No, I think this type of roasting highlights a bit more the unique character of the coffee. Hence, actually, you know, I want to try your coffee cycle, you know, roasted <laughs> taste yeah, so yeah. much. Uh, <laughs> because like in here, we have very challenges to so roast it as well. We have very, a few experts in uh, the roasting uh, industry in Myanmar. So, you know, we cannot get the very unique and consistency taste. Uh, maybe because uh, we would not say they are not expert, but maybe they still need to learn more. So like, uh, whenever I read about the coffee cycle description and about, you know, of your chain skill, so I have no doubt the taste will be very, you know, will be amazed, amazing and unique. So we really want to try. <laughs> yeah, which I'll, I'm not even sure if DHL is working currently to Myanmar. <laughs> I can send it. I'll try. I'll, I'll try to figure it out. But how far yeah. is your next uh, roasting station? How how far from your production site? Um, we had two uh, roasting uh, partners. One is the Titillate. It's is for our drive by car. Uh, it's is around one hundred four mile. Uh, so most of the roaster. Uh, you know, educate from the Thailand because uh, the Chile is the border of Thailand. So they come back to Nyoma to work for that. Um, another is the Yangon. This is the capital, uh, not capital city, economic city in Nyoma. Uh, we have uh, in Yangon as well. Yeah. That's far. <clears throat> yeah, Yangon is a bit far. By flight, it takes like one and a half hour by direct flight. And by car, it takes the two days. To transport, yeah. Is it is it safe to transport coffee by car? Is it safe to travel these far distances? We talked about a, a bit about some of the security challenges. How did you feel about that? Yeah, for the transport from the Yango is very challenging for us. Like Lasso, we faces a lot of the transportation delay because of the coup and the COVID. Like for example, I uh, sent uh, some of the coffee to, uh, from the Yango to Chengdong. Like it stay like more than a week to get that. Like if you're lucky enough, like during the COVID, like third wait, it stay like almost a month to get there. 
because a lot of reason like they have a lot of you know stop why to check the COVID test. If you are positive, you have to stay in a ten day quarantine, and then you can move on. And that's the exposure happened, so you cannot continue your journey. So you have to stop, uh, you know, safe area and have to wait to you know like to get back to normal. Like kind of a lot of challenging. But luckily last year has trying to you know encourage me not to get up for <laughs> exposing <laughs> and trying to follow us. We almost get up, you know. We all almost get up, uh, you know. We it's a very challenging so we almost get up but luckily you know has always sent us they can we can wait we can wait so finally we make it <laughs> so this year will be better because uh covid restriction uh, uh becomes you know like flexible so we only have the group problems so now uh expectation timeline is like three or four days not later than a week until now. So we feel a bit, you know, released, feeling released <laughs> by sending the coffee and other things. Yeah. And also last year, very challenging because of this case. We cannot, uh, you know, uh, uh, sell, uh, increase sale and uh, do marketing in Myanmar because the transportation is very limited. So we cannot deliver our coffee to other region. We have to focus only the Yangon and the Chinto area. So, and also people are moving around uh, very, you know, like, uh, like we can say only like 200 kg, like uh, very challenging, you know, because everyone struggling to survive. So, you know, uh, try, uh, you also saw a lot of news, right? About like the uh, demonstration, a lot, it's supposed to happen a lot. So people are trying to, you know, uh, fight a lot so we cannot do business and we cannot sell the, our coffee and the, do, not marketing so last year is a very challenging but this year now like compared with last year until now it's become a bit stable and uh, like uh, a few exposures are happening still happening but compared with the last year still very okay yeah also this year uh, yes. we, like i mentioned that we don't know what are going to be the policy going to be a about the exporting so mm -hmm. even the hands trying to follow up me uh we are still still without doing anything because the policy is very difficult to explain like last week they released another policy this week they released another policy so if we try to share with you guys update policy you get will be confused and will be amazed oh my god in this uh, this kind of policy stay happening right so we're trying to wait until like uh, a, a stable time uh, to get back to you about yeah. midwife we were trying to keep uh, we, we also like I saying that we will not work with the other partner so we, do, we don't need to worry for that but we were still you know like looking the stable time to get back to you so we will share uh, what is the update policy how we can work together for the you know like sending the coffee to Germany yeah that's uh, that's why we want to request you to wait us. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we will. Yeah, yeah, we will. We will keep you definitely. You're a keeper. We keep you mm -hmm. very close to our hearts and in our mouths, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very very much. This was extremely interesting. I knew very very little about the growing of coffee and coffee production in Myanmar, so this was really interesting. And um, thank you so much. And we are uh, awaiting patiently the next harvest, the next batch, to fill our cups.